Hello everyone, welcome to another video, it's Francesco here. So in this video, we're going to go over the new Evernote privacy policy. Now, I just wanna explain some of the features and some of the storyline to this and what happened in the last week and sort of share some of my opinions and thoughts. So the Evernote policy came out on December 14th and basically what happened is they had some announcements. So obviously the policy would go live on the 23rd of January, 2017, but inside of that policy update, there was a new mention of machine learning. Now in this update, the machine learning would allow engineers to read random notes uh, from any user on Evernote. Now this was an opt-in policy, so Evernote actually were allowing people to go into this straight away, and it would apply to all accounts. Now the idea behind giving access to this would allow the engineers to understand whether this feature, this new machine learning feature, that obviously they're growing and building, would be working efficiently. So what a lot of people did is they saw the privacy policy and many people took this as Evernote will be reading the actual information on your notes, allowing access to anyone in the company to do this. And this obviously is partly true because, you know, they would allow people to access a machine learning uh, context, but I think it was over-exaggerated to some extent. So people started tweeting that due to this, they would start leaving the service. Obviously people were keen on not having other people read their notes, even if they were Evernote employees, in order to help improve the service. So what Evernote did is it put out a message, obviously apologizing for this. Now I saw a lot of tweets from a lot of different users using obviously the Evernote hashtag, looked and had a chat with a few of people and people were very annoyed and what they've done is a lot of them has moved most of their notes over to another service like OneNote or um, Simple Note or something like that. Now obviously this annoyed a lot of users because there was a sort of trust element here that they were uh, getting missold on. So the day after, Evernote officially announced that they were revisiting the policy. Now this basically means that they were not implementing this policy from the 23rd of January. A lot of users on social media got very cross, and as you can imagine, a lot of them vowed to leave the service, and actually leaving in some cases. The CEO, Chris O'Neill, actually announced that the policy was a complete screw up, that actually there was a lot of mistakes made when they announced this. And from there, they have actually officially announced that they will not be running this policy from January 23rd. But this does open a lot of questions and a lot of dialogue as well. Are people going to be leaving Evernote for other services due to, you know, privacy issues and that sort of mistrust that this situation has caused? Now for me, I have been using Evernote for a very long time, maybe since 2012, 11. Uh, I can't really remember the specific date, but I was very weirded out when I heard this news. Obviously, as you can imagine, as someone who works with Evernote and obviously communicates with them quite regularly, I was a bit strange out by this. And when I saw the updates and a lot of emails coming through from people asking about what this policy meant for them, I was very concerned. So what I did is I did some background reading on all of this and it, it does seem like Evernote's made a genuine mistake here. Releasing that policy does seem like very out of order. It's not the first time Evernote has had some issues with security. Back in 2013, they actually had a security breach, um, something that was out of their sort of like realm, but something that uh, users were very hit by during that time. For me, I will be continuing using Evernote. Uh, I actually have a lot of notes there already. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, if that policy was coming into place, then I would definitely consider something else, um, of course, but it's really dependent on what sort of service that you want. Do you want something that you will opt into and obviously help improve the service, or do you want total security and uh, redefinition? Anyway, I thought as well I'd suggest a couple of alternatives because I know a lot of people and in all fairness have left the service and I do want to recommend a few others because this channel isn't necessarily about being devoted to one specific tool, it's about being devoted to productivity apps in, as a whole. So other services I'd recommend, uh, have a look at OneNote. Obviously it's a Microsoft run service. They have a very good infrastructure and obviously it works alongside a lot of the other Microsoft applications. Um, I'm not too keen on some of the apps that they develop. Evernote does develop a lot better iOS applications and obviously the Mac app, but again, it's a really good alternative. Simple Note is another one. I'm not sure whether you'll be fully comfortable with how it's laid out because it's very simple, very clear, and not too like document and project management creative. So that's another one. Quip is another one too. It's more team collaborative, but you can use it individually. 
Uh, another service where you can save documents, create them. Uh, it's sort of like a blend between Google Drive, Evernote and Dropbox Paper. Coming to Dropbox Paper, that is another service that a lot of people have been moving to. I've seen that on social media. So that's another one to consider. Uh, obviously you can collaborate if you have another Dropbox user uh, and that's pretty handy. There are a few of my other alternatives. For me, I'm gonna be sticking with Evernote. I know that they have made a few issues with this, but that's not a problem. Um, you know, you buy into a company sometimes and I think it's a pretty good service, pretty good product and it's ahead of a lot of the other uh, people in the app. But anyway guys, I hope this helped explain things and I hope it uh, gave you some information. What I would do is I'll include all of the links in the description to any of their policies and also some of the news articles around this so that you get a general picture, a big picture of this and understand all of the details and legislation that they've put out. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think of Evernote, uh, whether you're still using it and what you think of it as a company as a whole. Also do thumbs up this video and subscribe as well. I put out weekly content on Monday, Wednesday and Friday and I'm looking forward to sharing some more videos with you. Anyway guys, make sure to have a great week, keep productive and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.